Hello guys, this is Al from Open Source Channel. Welcome to a new episode on how to and today as usual we're going to install review the actual web panel ISP config. Never done it before. It's not something that I really like to use, but hey, someone requested it. So we're gonna do it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, click on the bell icon so you get notified every time I make a new video. And here we go, we are on ispconfig.org. This is where you can find all the information you need to install the web panel. Again, guys, don't forget all the information you need is in the description below. Documentation link, installation link, everything you need, just look below, all right? So that's all you gotta do. Now, without any delay, let's go and have a look where we're going to install the web panel you can install on ubuntu debian i'm going to use ubuntu i got already one already running uh, on debian but i'm going to use ubuntu for this installation here you can find update instruction just in case you need to update the uh, panel here is on how to forge you will find information on how to install and i'm going to uh show you step by step line by line on how to get started as you can see here already go a ubuntu running on my machine i'm using proxmox as usual and again everything looks good i'm going to do the installation using putty so again pause it just in case you want to follow along and then when you're ready just press play so again guys all you need really is just a vps or if you're running a local machine that's all you need really um, and for this installation, I'm running two CPUs and, uh, and about uh, four gigabyte of RAM and 25 gig on the actual uh, disk size. Okay, uh, for the IP is using my router, so it automatically gets the IP from the router. Nothing, uh, nothing major really. All right, I'm going to do now. We're going to bring up the browser of the you know the actual link of the installation. Bring up Putty configuration. I'm going to type my IP. And I'm going to log in with my credentials and then I'm going to follow along line by line, as I said, very simple. So I'm going to start by using so dash, uh, space dash, but don't forget you need to put maybe sudo in the front, otherwise you won't be able to do it. So once you do that, just tap the password and you should be good to go. And as you can see, root is there. Now, bear in mind, if you're already root, you don't need to do this step, okay? Now, the first thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to configure the host name and the hosts. And what I'm gonna do now, I'm going to do nano. Let me split this up here. Nano, there we go, let's copy this one here. It won't let me do it, let me copy again copy and let's paste there we go so as you can see i'm going to change it to two the first two lines i'm going to leave the, the, the rest and I, here i'm going to put the actual domain the cp.opensourcechannel.uk this is what i'm going to use as my domain and host uh, cp is the host i'm going to show you later on how you have a look as well all the informations and let's go and do this one as well on the host names no we're supposed to have just uh, as you say here a server one for me will be cp uh cp dot and the domain name so cp is the actual host name all right so system ctl and host name let's have a look at the host name just in case sometimes you need to reboot your um well actually you need to reboot your um your server and as you can see, it still says home here. Let's have a look first and see what happened. See if we can actually do it before we can actually start uh, the, uh, tell you what, yeah, let me do this first. I just restart the server. It might be, hasn't done it yet, but I I believe is, you know, I, I need to change again the hosts and uh, perhaps something, something, you know, um, not right there. So let me do this again. Let me type the password and I'm going to do nano etc host. Again, let's have a look. As you can see, nothing has changed. So I'm going to do host. Let me copy this one here. Copy. And yes, I think it's the first line is wrong. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to copy and just change the first line. So we got the first line there. I just copy and paste and that's it. That's all you got to do. 
save that and now we're going to do exactly the same thing uh, i want to make sure first bind see the uh, host name it should still be okay uh, cp is there so everything looks good let's get out let's have a look at the host name and as you can see now everything works good all right now next step is to run the update and the upgrade i'm going to copy and i'm going to paste it somehow i don't know why it doesn't copy but anyway let's copy and paste enter and let's f uh, wait until it finish and we can start with the next step here we go that's been done all right so now we gotta go to the next step and that is the installation of isp config there are multiple things you could do there are multiple options that's up to you which one i want to do i'm going for the standard default ones that you can see that I, the one i'm going to use uh, as you can see this is a, one of one of the options unattended upgrades and i'm going to use that one there for example and I already copied i believe let's see exactly so all i'm going to do is just copy and paste and wait for the installation now the installation really does take a little bit of time what i've done here i just made it speed up all you got to do really is just at this point type yes and press enter after that it will go until the actual installation is done it does take time as i said i have sped up all the the uh, installation so you don't have to wait a long time so anyway now um it should be ready nearly soon and then you can as you can see here now the installation has been done make sure you copy those passwords and don't forget to delete the log file so i'm going to make a copy and i'm going to paste it in my uh, notepad again here you need to delete the log file as well and i'm going to also show you how to do that as you can see i already made a copy i'm going to save it and let's go oh, i just press right uh, click on my mouse that's why <laughs> automatically done it so it's going to be cd slash temp slash ip isp config dash ai dash var dash log and as you can see there's a setup there log that it needs to be deleted so the line to remove it is rm and the actual name of the file here we go press enter and it should be okay ls and you got the actual um file that is missing logic has been deleted now the next thing to do is to type the ip now you can ch uh, check the ip by typing ip space addr just in case you don't know the uh, the, the ip of your server um, it comes with error 400 because it's a https and not http so once we've done the correct protocol as you can see we are ready to use isp config now it is admin and the actual password is the one you can see in your end installation as i showed you mine will be this one here so i'm going to paste it and i'm going to press login and as you can see i have logged in in isp config i'm going to hide that now the first thing you got to do is setting up the firewall that's the first thing so you go to system then you gotta click on firewall add the firewall record and everything is already done for you all you got to do is press save and as you can see that is done sites you can add new sites you can do a lot of things um as you can see the rules are still been applied in the background so it's very simple easy web panel really um it's not one of my preferred but again a lot of people wanted to be install it and that's that's it that's what i'm doing make sure those information here as you can see on screen is kept safe somewhere it's very important okay you might change the password of the admin if you want to here you can actually add the clients uh, if you have multiple clients if you want to do the resellers here you can add uh, domains sites emails you can change the dns and again guys you can do a lot of things oh by the way guys make sure that you open those ports as you can see here on your router otherwise 
you won't be able to access the uh, panel, uh, well, any sites really from the outside world. In my case, port 8080 is not in my router. Only port 80 and 443 has been forwarded. Nothing more. Here is the panel. Let's have a look here. And as you can see, even with the certificate, is already done. Now I am using Cloudflare um, for the you know for the SSL certificates. I'm not using anything else. Right here, you can see multiple other options. The system, the tools. You can click on, for example, on the system. You can see his mail server. Which service of the server are running? We got DB server, file server, DNS, web server, and mail as well. Now on sites, uh, yeah, you can actually add domain name. I'm going to add opensourcechannel.uk. And once I done that, uh, I'm going to leave everything else. This is no client, so it will be automatically added to the admin. I'm going to do Let's Encrypt SSL to any auto subdomain. So everything else, I'm going to choose the PHP. In this case, PHP FPM. I'm going to also choose the PHP version again. You can actually disable it. It's up to you. Whatever you want to do, really. And I'm going to choose one of the PHP version 7.4 uh, web server config. I haven't created anything. You could do that as well. It's up to you, really. Uh, here you can actually copy and paste a certificate if you wanted to. So once you're happy with this, all you're going to do is save. All right, so anyway, now the website has been added, the domain, as you can see, this is not secure. Again, when you use uh, the actual domain locally, you might have a problem with the certificates, as I am. I'm gonna open the Cognito, and let's have a look if it works with HTTPS, with Open Source Channel, with the one I just had, with the actual Let's Encrypt. Again, I'm using Cloudflare only for the CP one, but for the main domain, and any other subdomain, I'm use Let's Encrypt. So as you can see here, in Incognito, everything works perfectly well. So as you can see, it's up and secure. So this is the actual main thing here. Let's have a look at the CP as well. And as you can see, the main CP. Again, I'm not going to do port 8080, as I said, guys, because I'm not forwarding through my router. Only port 80 and port 443 is forwarded. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for joining me today for this small tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.